The story begins with Femisha, a girl marked by misfortune, fleeing into the night as her own villagers chase her. The village chief condemns her, declaring that those born without stars, like Femisha, bring bad luck and shouldn't exist. As dawn breaks, Femisha, exhausted, navigates through the forest to her secret hideouts. She gathers her belongings hidden in magic bags, cookware, books, potions, and other necessities, relieved that her pursuers haven't found her main stash. Femisha is no ordinary girl. She's a human reincarnated from another world. Although her memories of her past life are faint, she occasionally hears whispers from it. Resigned to a life devoid of happiness due to her harsh experience, Femisha decides to emotionally detach from her village that has shunned her. While trying to move forward, she struggles to climb a hill, nearly tumbling off a cliff. Femisha longs for practical skills like others in her village. Her past self reminds her not to lament her birth, urging her to start anew. In her journey, Femisha stumbles upon a dumping ground. Her familiarity with the place suggests she's scavenged here before. She rummages through the garbage, finding usable clothes and a map that falls out of a pocket, which could help her navigate. Amidst the trash, she also discovers expired potions. Although discolored, Femisha hopes they might still be effective, musing on the irony of an unwanted child like her relying on discarded items. Her scavenging is interrupted by the sound of a tamer and his slimes nearby, tasked with clearing the trash. Femisha realizes they're searching for her. The tamer, communicating with his colleague, suspects that Femisha is heading to laugh off the nearest village. They express unease about the chief placing a bounty on a young girl, considering it an extreme measure. Femisha, in shock, overhears her pursuers saying they'll take her dead or alive. Realizing the village chief wants her gone for good, she tries to escape but accidentally falls off a cliff. Luckily, her bag catches on a branch, saving her from a worse fate. Injured, she has to use several healing potions, which are old and not very strong. Later, she finds a clear river and takes a moment to relax, something she's never experienced due to a life spent hiding. Femisha resolves to be bold, recalling the fortune teller's advice to disguise herself as a boy for safer travel. She cuts her hair, changes into boyish clothes, and decides to adopt a new name. Her past self suggests the name Ivy, likening her to the resilient plant. As Ivy continues her journey, she's captivated by a unique, light-emitting slime. Upon closer inspection, she finds it adorable. Checking her monster compendium, she learns it's a rare, unnamed slime, often called the weakest or disintegrating slime. Identifying with the slime's vulnerability, Ivy feels a connection. When a breeze threatens to blow the slime away, she learns it's so delicate it could disappear with a mere touch or strong wind. Ivy gently assists the struggling slime, saddened to read that its lifespan is less than a day. Realizing how little is known about this rare creature due to its brief existence, Ivy is moved by its fragility. Another gust of wind nearly sends the slime into the river, but Ivy quickly saves it. She decides to stay with the slime, understanding its transient nature and wanting to cherish its brief time. In Orjagoos, Ivy explains, humans receive skills marked with stars when they turn five. Her parents had skills in carpentry, needlework, and mending, each marked with stars as a measure of proficiency. These stars, bestowed by the gods, often dictate one's future. However, when Ivy turned five, she received a taming skill but with no stars. Unable to tame even the smallest animal, let alone monsters, she became known as a starless tamer. This revelation changed the way her village, even her own parents, treated her. She lost her sense of belonging. Ivy shares with the slime about her past life and the fortune teller who educated her and gifted her magical bags. These bags could carry numerous items without feeling heavy. Ivy becomes emotional, revealing the fortune teller's recent death, which left her feeling utterly alone. Ivy tells the slime that he is the very first friend she made and wished that they can stay together. The next morning, Ivy wakes up to find the slime gone, thinking it disintegrated as expected. Surprised by her own sadness, she resolves to head to the royal capital, following the fortune teller's advice. To her joy, she finds the slime alive inside her magic bag, proving some information in the compendium wrong. In the forest, Ivy tries taming the slime by channeling her magic into it. The slime glows, accepting her efforts, and she names it Sora, marking the successful taming with a symbol on its forehead. Ivy, excited to have a companion, happily introduces herself to Sora. Later, Ivy traps and butchers her tenth field mouse, showing respect for its sacrifice. She wonders about her previous life's lifestyle, as her past self often reacts strongly to such tasks. Ivy prepares the meat neatly, planning a feast with Sora for the night, keeping the slime safe in her bag. Checking her map, Ivy realizes the royal capital isn't even shown, signifying the long journey ahead from her current remote location. Ivy decides to head towards Odol, a nearby town, for safety. A gust of wind almost sweeps away her companion slime, Sora, but she catches him just in time. 
Sensing danger, she quickly hides in the trees, narrowly avoiding a group of monster ants marching by. Once the ants pass, Ivy feels relieved and notices that Sora has grown slightly larger and heavier. She then feels a sting on her face, realizing she's been cut by a branch. Acting quickly, Ivy applies several expired blue potions to her wound, healing it but depleting her potion supply. As she approaches the village, Ivy notices wanted posters with her image and a hefty reward of 500 Dao. Each poster portrays her differently, making her recognize that she's now a fugitive. In the village, Ivy is struck by how much skills and magic are integrated into everyday life. Passing a bakery, she longs for bread, something she hasn't had in a long time. She also considers selling the field mice she's hunted at a butcher's shop but hesitates. The butcher, sensing her presence with his two-star odor skill, invites her over and praises the freshness and quality of her catch, offering her 100 dal for it. He expresses interest in buying more, as most hunters are focused on larger game. With her earnings, Ivy buys bread at an affordable price, amusing the bakery owner with her innocence. The villagers mistake her for a boy, indicating her disguise is effective. Finding a secluded spot, Ivy shares her bread with Sora, but the slime shows no interest in eating. Ivy learns that Sora, the rare slime, communicates no by spreading itself out. She's curious about what it eats. The next day, she successfully catches a bunch of field mice in the forest and finds a dumping ground full of expired potions. To her surprise, Sora devours the blue potions, revealing a unique ability to dissolve inorganic materials, a trait of high-level rare slimes. Ivy tests this by offering a vase to Sora, but the slime refuses. She then offer a red potion he declines that too and shows a preference for blue potions only. The slime sees more blue portion and starts devouring it. Ivy asks him to leave some for her too. After selling her field mice for 250 dao, Ivy visits the bakery and is gifted an extra loaf of bread. She enjoys a peaceful moment by a stream, cleaning up and savoring her bread, wishing these tranquil times would last. Later, she encounters some adventurers and narrowly avoids recognition due to her changed appearance. The adventurers mistake her for a boy and tease her, prompting Ivy to leave quickly. Back in the village, Ivy's fear heightens when she sees her wanted poster. Despite receiving more free bread from the bakery owner, her fear of being discovered forces her to leave the village abruptly. She's saddened to depart, especially since the villagers were kind. On her journey, at a crossroads, Ivy hesitates, unsure of which direction her hunters took. Sora tries to communicate something, but Ivy can't decipher it. Regretting her hasty departure and now hungry and thirsty, she chooses a path and finds a tree with delicious fruits. However, Sora's disapproving gesture and shivering alert her to danger. The tree transforms into a monster, attacking her and revealing her pursuers. In a tense moment, the tree monster's root lunges at her, but Sora saves her just in time. Injured and losing strength, Ivy falls unconscious. She thinks of healing her wound but realizes that she has no potion. Lastly, she sees Sora jump onto her wound. She fears the worst, thinking Sora might be consuming her, as some slimes are known to digest humans. This bring an end to our episode. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to like, share and subscribe for next episode.